Good morning, everybody. Welcome to All Saints. If you're with us here in person or if you're on the stream or catching up later on the DVD, it is lovely to have you with us today. My name is Tim Carter. I'm the vicar here at All Saints and um, I'm going to be leading and preaching this morning. Um, this morning is our church family communion service, um, which is uh, when we have communion towards the beginning and then the youngsters go to their groups for their teaching and we have our teaching together. There is creche this morning as well, so if your youngsters want to go to groups after communion, that's fine, that's uh, really good. If you prefer to stay in, that's absolutely fine as well. And if at home you want to have um, some bread or wine or something similar to eat or drink when we have communion, that's fine as well. It's all fine. I feel like I'm repeating myself a lot this morning. <sighs> now, when we come to communion, we are going to try something different. We are going to try what is called simultaneous administration. Which means that if you want to, you can receive bread and wine. Okay? So we're going to ask you to, uh, the sides people will direct you, we're going to ask you to come forward and stand to receive. Um, we haven't got the rail because we don't want lots of touch points, people getting up and down. So stand to receive and you'll be given the option of receiving a wafer that has dip, been dipped either in wine or non-alcoholic wine, depending what you prefer. But it'll always be dipped by me, so there's only one person's fingers going anywhere near the wine. If you prefer not to have it dipped, you just like the wafer, just tell me that when you come forward. If you would prefer not to receive at all, that's absolutely fine as well. Just stay where you are uh, when, when we're calling people forward. We do have gluten-free wafers, but they are very small. They're too small to dip. So I'm sorry if you're gluten intolerant. I can offer you the wafers, but I can't offer you um, them dipped into the wine or the non-alcoholic wine this morning. So um, this is an experiment. Uh, let's see how it goes, and I'm very, uh, you're very welcome to feed back to me afterwards how you felt it went and those kind of things. We're just trying to slowly get back to normal. So bear with us. Okay, I think that's all I needed to say as we start this morning. Um, we're going to sing together and worship God as we gather. So if you're, it's comfortable for you to do so, would you please stand? Gracious God to you this morning with our hearts open. Holy Spirit, would you come and fill us and inspire us to worship. In Jesus' name. Amen. Of heaven, you 
Oh, Father, thank you for the great things we've seen you doing in our lives. And we trust you. We rest in you to keep working and being there for us. Amen. Do please take a seat. One of the great things that Jesus has done is to forgive us, to break those chains of things, make us feel guilty or ashamed as we come to God and say sorry. And we have the opportunity now to say sorry to God this morning. For the times when we have failed to show your love in our families, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. For the times when we've closed our ears to the cries of your children throughout the world, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. For the times when we have not recognised you in the faces of those who care for us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May God, our Father, forgive us our sins and bring us to the fellowship of his table with his saints forever. Amen. And as we prepare to come to communion, we're going to sing again. So if it's comfortable for you to do so, let's stand and you can continue to dance, those of you who are dancing.
Please be seated. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this to remember me. Father, we do this to remember him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this to remember me. Father, we do this to remember him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Okay, so we are now are going to have the option to receive communion. The science people will direct you to the front if you come and stand at the front as I suggested. If you'd prefer not to receive, stay where you are. And if you'd prefer just have the wafer, not the wafer dripped in the wine, let us know that as well as you come forward. I would ask you just to give each other space at the front here, not all crammed together. And as you come, go back a different way. So I think that's everything.
Jesus Christ, I think upon your sacrifice, you became nothing, poured out to death. Many times I've wondered at your gift of life, and I'm in the place once again. again I look upon the cross where you die. I'm humbled by your mercy and I'm broken inside. Once again I thank you. Once again I pour out my Stop. 
God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. As we have been fed and forgiven at his table, let us go and walk in the light together. Amen. In a moment we're going to share the peace together. Of course we can't all hug and what we used to do, but we can all wave and say hi. And as we're doing this, I'd encourage, if you're going to go to groups, uh, young people, if you could make your way now, that would be great. Uh, Out of here, turn left and left. There are groups for everybody up to 13-ish including creche. If you'd prefer to stay in with um, those who come with you, that's absolutely fine. For the very little ease, if you're staying in and you get uncomfortable at any point, there is a sound relay into the prayer room at the back. Um, But that's only if you want to go there. Would you stand with me if you're comfortable to do so? God makes peace within us. Let's claim it. God makes peace between us. Let's share it. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Say hello, introduce yourself to your neighbour if you don't recognise them. And youngsters, if you'd like to go to groups, now is the time to do that. Okay, yes, do feel free to take a seat once you have sufficiently shared peace. Um, And we're going to have our Bible reading. It's going to ask Ali to come and share with us from Nehemiah. The first reading is taken from Nehemiah, chapter 8, verses 1 to 12. Ezra reads the law. When the seventh month came and the Israelites had settled in their towns, all the people came together as one in the square before the water gate. They told Ezra, the teacher of the law, to bring out the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had commanded for Israel. So on the first day of the seventh month, Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly, which was made up of men and women and all who were able to understand. He read it aloud from daybreak till noon as he faced the square before the water gate in the presence of the men, women and others who could understand. And all the people listened attentively to the book of the law. Ezra, the teacher of the law, stood on a high wooden platform built for the occasion. Beside him, on his right, stood Mattathiah, Shema, Aniah, Uriah, Hilkiah and Marsiah, And on his left were Padiah, Mishael, Malkijah, Hashem, Hashbadana, Zechariah, 
and Meshullam. Ezra opened the book. All the people could see him because he was standing above them. And as he opened it, the people all stood up. Ezra praised the Lord, the great God, and all the people lifted their hands and responded, Amen, Amen. Then they bowed down and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. The Levites, Jeshua, Bani, Sherebiah, Jamin, Akub, Shabbathiah, Hadiah, Marsiah, Kalita, Azariah, Josabad, Hanan, and Peliah instructed the people in the law while the people were standing there. They read from the book of the law of God, making it clear and giving the meaning so that the people understood what was being read. Then Nehemiah the governor, Ezra the priest and teacher of the law, and the Levites who were instructing the people said to them all, this day is holy to the Lord your God, do not mourn or weep. For all the people had been weeping as they listened to the words of the law. Nehemiah said, go and enjoy choice food and sweet drinks and send some to those who have nothing prepared. This day is holy to our Lord. Do not grieve, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. The Levites calmed all the people, saying, Be still, for this is a holy day. Do not grieve. Then all the people went away to eat and drink, to send portions of food, and to celebrate with great joy, because they now understood the words that had been made known to them. This is the word of the Lord. Uh, Today's Gospel reading is taken from Luke chapter 24, verses 13 to 27. That's Luke 24, verses 13 to 27. If it is comfortable for you to do so, please stand for the Gospel reading. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. On the road to Emmaus. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you doing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, "Are Are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things, he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. For we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. And some of our companions went to the tomb, and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. He said to them, How foolish you are, how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please do take a seat. As we gather around the written word and listen to the spoken word, may we meet with the living word, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Um, I feel like recently I've been starting a lot of sermons with references to television programmes. I wonder if that's anything to do with lockdown. (laughs) Anyway, I wonder if there are any other fans of the great British pottery throwdown out there. Yeah, some, some hands up, lots of kind of vague faces. For those of you um, who are not in the know, it's like Bake Off, only 
Instead of cooking things, the contestants make things out of clay. Um, perhaps it's the fact that I served my curacy in Stoke-on-Trent, um, and the programme is filmed there. Um, not sure what it is, but it is one of my favourites of the genre of all these kind of making things programmes. Great pottery throwdown is top for me. Uh, and each week, there are a couple of tasks, um, but almost all of them, at some point, involve a pottery wheel. Has anybody here ever had a go on a pottery wheel? Yeah. Anybody here any good on a pottery wheel? I'm really... Oh, Tony is. Hey, so I hope what I'm about to say is right, because otherwise he'll be telling me off afterwards. Um, I had a go once. It really didn't go well. Um, anyway, the potters on the throwdown, they create a whole, whole range of things, from like tiny little cups all the way through to great amphora kind of thrown in two halves, which are then pieced together variety of skills and tools and bits of their body, thumbs and knuckles and even elbows at some points with the really big ones. And one thing is common to everything they make on the wheel. They always start by getting the lump of clay centred. They spend quite a lot of time getting it centred. Um, because unless they get it po properly centred, they're never going to get anywhere with what they actually want to make. Um, and it seems to me that this principle carries over into all other areas of life as well. Mechanical, emotional, spiritual. When things are spinning round, if we don't get centred, things start going wrong. If we do get centred correctly, then beautiful things can be created, whether it's on a pottery wheel or a lathe or whatever. When things are spinning round, if we don't get centred, then things start going wrong. But if we do get centred correctly, then beautiful things can be created. Now, over the last month or so, we've been looking at the accounts of the return to Jerusalem of the people of God following the exile in Babylon. Um, and they returned to rebuild the city under the leadership of Ezra and Nehemiah. And we've been thinking about what insights we might be able to gain from that, from the rebuilding that we're having to do in our lives, in our communities, in our work, in all kinds of areas in our church community post-COVID. Um, and we've talked about the foundations of worship, about the importance of working together, uh, the need of building in new patterns of justice. And they're expressed in our church values of celebrating, of loving God, of loving each other and loving our neighbours. So this morning, we're thinking about the importance of being centred on the word of God. And the fact that that means setting our lives to revolve around what God says to us. Again, this fits in with our church values of loving God. As part of that, we say we want to be, we value being rooted in the Bible. Perhaps another way of expressing that, we value being centred on the Bible, of our lives revolving around what God says to us, not our understanding of God's word revolving around our lives. So, let's turn to our readings, and particularly our Nehemiah reading, where for the first time we actually get Nehemiah and Ezra together and see what they have to say to us this morning. Um, and when I preach, I don't very often go through a passage verse by verse, but it kind of seemed appropriate this morning. So if you've got a copy on your phone or you've bought a hard copy with you, you might want to follow through as we look at this passage from Nehemiah. So, let's start at the beginning. Always a good place to start. Verse 1. The people gathered together with one accord and told Ezra to bring out the book of the law. The people gathered together with one accord and told Ezra to bring out the book of the law. And two things strike me about this. If there was one thing that the people of God had not actually been very good at over the years, it was being of one mind, of gathering together. They'd been quite tribal. They'd fallen out with their leaders when things had gone wrong. They'd split into two kingdoms, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. They'd been more divided than not in their history. But now they are of a common mind, agreed, gathering around God's word. It's a grassroots, bottom-up movement. And that's the second thing that struck me. It's not Ezra telling them that he's going to go and get the book and could they all please gather round... That's not what happens. They gather round 
and ask their teacher to bring out the book. There is a hunger for the Word of God. There is a hunger for a good understanding of it. So the first two words I want to take from this this morning are unity and hunger. Unity and hunger. Verse 2. The assembly was made up of men and women and all who are able to understand. Men and women and all who are able to understand. Everyone was there, whole families, no division of age or gender. There was an equality of access to the word of God and teaching about it. So that's the third word I want to take, equality. Verse 3. He read from daybreak until noon, and all the people listened attentively. Now just stop and think about that a minute. When is daybreak? And let's assume this is kind of in the Middle East, so closer to the equator. Daybreak average, kind of six, seven o'clock? Noon? Well, noon's 12. So how long is that? Shall we say five or six hours? I'm not sure that I could stand and read the Bible for five or six hours. I'm absolutely certain that I couldn't listen attentively for five or six hours. It's a really long time. Should we try it? (laughs) And I think, if I remember correctly, they were stood up. It's a really long time. These people showed perseverance and dedication to the Word of God. They wanted to soak it all up, to soak it all in, to know the great story of God in which they could find themselves. That's the next two words, perseverance and attentiveness. Verses 5 to 6. Ezra opened the book, the people stood up. Ezra praised the Lord Everyone worshipped. And as I said a little bit earlier, we talked about worship at the foundations of any rebuilding a few weeks ago. And here it is again. When we meet with God, encounter God in the word, it draws out worship. It inspires worship. It gives us words to worship. How many of our songs and hymns are drawn from scripture? Most of the liturgy of the Church of England is scripture. Prayer and worship shot through with the word of God. So that's our next word, worship. Verse 7. The Levites instructed the people in the law, making it clear and giving the meaning so that the people understood what was being read. Now thank you to Ali for reading all the names of the Levites. Peter had a word with me before the service and said, doesn't getting lost in all those Hebrew names, doesn't it distract us from what's being said? And he may have a point. Um, But these were actual people. This was like Tim the preacher or Heather the preacher or Neil the preacher. These were actual people. And they were explaining what was being read. And and there's a couple of different ways of understanding this. Um, It's quite, well, the book would have been written in Hebrew. And it's quite, and so Ezra would have been reading in Hebrew, but it's quite likely that during the exile up to Babylon, the ability to understand and speak Hebrew had been lost. They were probably, the people listening, their native language was probably Aramaic. By the time Jesus was um, around, everybody spoke Aramaic, nobody spoke Hebrew. Um, So Jesus didn't speak Hebrew, he spoke Aramaic. So it's likely that the people listening wouldn't have understood the Hebrew that was being read. And so the first thing that would have happened would have been a translation into Aramaic. In addition to that, it's likely that they would have needed explaining, helping to see how they could live it out, how they could apply it. So our next two words are translation and application. And then we get to verse 9. Do not mourn or weep, for all the people had been weeping. I wonder, why do we think that the people were weeping as they heard the words of the law of Moses explained to them? What was in there 
to make people cry. Maybe as they heard the story of the rescue from slavery in Egypt and the entry to the promised land, they recognised their own stories of rescue from exile and being brought to Jerusalem and it brought up all those emotions associated with exile. Maybe they wept over the sins of their ancestors who had been faithless to the covenant they were hearing about and the God who had brought them to the promised land. Perhaps they recognised their own half-heartedness and failure to live in God's way and follow God's command. Maybe they were weeping for the lost years. Whatever it is, Nehemiah steps in and comforts them. He reminds them that the Holy God has brought them back to Jerusalem so they can go forward with hope and joy. Their weeping was turned to joy because it became a celebration. Not because there weren't things that needed mourning, but because in the midst of mourning, there was the light of hope. So our next two words this morning are weeping and joy. So, here we find the word of God centering the people of God as they reform their community. We find the word of God being central in unity, hunger, equality, perseverance, attentiveness, worship, translation, application, weeping and joy. So, as as we seek to rebuild, as we seek to form our lives after the last 18 months, How might we centre ourselves on the Word of God? How can we make God's Word central to our lives? Well, I'd like to have a look at these words in a slightly different order. So let's begin with hunger, perseverance and attentiveness. Don't panic, I'm not going to suggest six-hour sermons. But... It does seem to me that these things deal with our attitude towards our engagement with God's Word. They deal with our attitude and our will. Do we want to read it? Do we want to learn from it? Are we hungry? Do we persevere? Are we attentive? And if the answer to those questions is no, then our lives are not going to be centred on it. There are loads of resources out there to help us. There are audio Bibles, study Bibles, internet Bibles, Bibles on your phone, apps like Lectio 365, paper Bibles. There's all kinds of options. The Holy Spirit is there to help us, to give us that hunger, that perseverance, that attentiveness if we ask for it. As we centre our wills on the Word of God, so our lives will be centred there as well. And then what about unity, equality, translation and application? These seem to me to deal with how we read the word of God. We are meant to read it together. To read it together, to work on understanding what it says to our context, to translate it into our lives and to put it into practice. Have I got another slide, Nathaniel? And at All Saints, we do this in a variety of ways. Small groups are probably the best and most effective and important way of doing this. Gathering together in unity and equality to translate it and apply it to our lives in community. And as we centre our minds on the word of God, so our lives will be centred there as well. And then, worship, weeping and joy our emotional response to God's word. Our word. The God's word shows us who God is, draws us into worship. It can fuel and equip us to worship. Sometimes it will make us cry as we realise how far we fall short of God, as our hearts are broken for the world, as God's heart breaks, as we lament with the pain we're experiencing. 
Sometimes it will fill us with joy as we see the wonder of creation, as we experience the healing touch of God, as we are encouraged. As we centre our emotions on the word of God, so our lives will be centred there as well. So, as we rebuild after COVID, learning from Nehemiah and Ezra and the people of God as they rebuilt Jerusalem, Let's centre our wills on the word of God in hunger, perseverance and attentiveness. Let's centre our minds on the word of God in unity, equality, translation and application. And let's centre our emotions on the word of God in worship, weeping and joy. Let's centre our lives on the word of God so that beautiful things can be created. Amen. I'm going to ask the musicians to come up. And we're going to have um, some sung worship as we respond to this. If you're comfortable to do so, would you stand with me? Come, Holy Spirit, fill us with a hunger for your word. Help us to centre on it, to receive from it. In a moment of quiet, we bring before God those things that we but see as barriers to us engaging with the Word of God. That's lack of time or busyness or not being able to read. Feeling that we can't get our heads around it. And we lay them down at Jesus' feet and we say, Holy Spirit, come and help us. Come and make us hungry. Thank you. 
Amen. Please take a seat. So, I have some bands of marriage to read. Here we go. I publish the bands of marriage between Joshua John Nicklin and Emily Natasha Morgan, both single and of this parish, with a qualifying connection with St. John the Baptist Withington. This is for the third time of asking, if anyone knows any reason that may they may not marry each other, you are to declare it. Let's pray for them. Father God, we thank you for Joshua and Emily, and we pray for your blessing on them as they prepare for their wedding day, for married life together, that it will be full of love and lifelong to your glory. Amen. Now, I won't say we have strangers in our midst, but it has been a little while since we've seen Janine and uh, Caleb and Lydia and Gareth with us. It's really lovely to welcome you here this morning. Janine, would you like to come up here? Because there's a particular reason you haven't been around and you are now, isn't there? Yeah. You stand over there. Very good. So Janine, where have you been? I've been um, at a placement church, sorry, I've been at a placement church um, called St. Andrew's in Schiffnell, um, and I've been doing that whilst I was doing my discernment um, for ordination. Okay, so you've been through a discernment process, and what's the outcome of that discernment process? So I went to my BAP interview in April, and um, I got through, so I carried on my placement church. Um, Yes, so you are starting, have started ordination training? Yes, yeah, I started this September. Yeah. Wow, and where are you studying? In Queen's, Birmingham. Okay, yeah. and is that full time? No, thankfully. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, it's part time. Um, I, I do chaplaincy work as well, so um, I chose to do part time rather than full time residential. Okay, so you're doing part-time chaplaincy work and training for ordination in your spare time and continue on placement at St Andrew Schiffnell? Yes. And you breathe when? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I try not to, just to conserve energy. <laughs> okay, so this is fantastic news. Um, uh, Janine has uh, been worshipping with us for a while with her family. Um, they're now making a home at the Minster, which is fantastic for them. And uh, Janine is not going to be around very much because uh, her vocation has been identified here. We've kind of supported her as she's gone through the process. And now we are setting her free to go and minister elsewhere, which is brilliant. But we really wanted to mark it, let you guys know that this is what was happening, and for us to be able to pray together for Janine. So, Janine, how can we be praying for you? That I have energy and <laughs> time to um, yeah, do my job and the... Um theology kind of stuff. work stuff yeah and stuff at the that I have to do at the link church the placement church as well okay yeah. okay coordinating it all shall we get you all up so we can pray for you can you put your mask back on yeah. no 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 sorry I meant I meant the whole family you can all stand in a minute the, the, the uh, Claire and Lydia don't have to if they're not feeling up for it but if they want to they're very welcome no that's all right <laughs> yeah so yes let's stand up Stretch your hands out to the of this pair. Oh, Father God, thank you so much uh, for Gareth and Janine and Caleb and Lydia. Thank you for the way in which you've worked in their lives and the ministries you've given them. Thank you for their faithfulness in stepping into them and doing the works you've prepared for them to do. And I pray your blessing on them as they continue to be obedient to you. For Janine, as she does this training and placement and work, that she would have supernatural energy, that your Holy Spirit would fill her again and again, and she would know herself held by you and never overwhelmed. And for Gareth, as he, take, as he uh, ministers at the Telford Minster as part of the vision team there, your Holy Spirit would fill him and equip him for that. And we pray for their marriage, that it would be strong, a mutual support that draws them closer to you. And we bless them in Jesus' name. Amen.
Bless you both. Go well. You. Do you sit down? And uh, we are going to continue in prayer as Sheila comes to bring us our intercessions. I think that's next. Yes. The response to the words, Lord, hear us, is Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray. We begin our prayers this morning by praying for the work of Church Pastoral Aid Society, one of our mission partners, as they seek to encourage and train church leaders and members. They ask us to pray at this time for three new members of their leadership team, John Valentine, Matt Ierson and Matt Hogg, and particularly as they move away from traditional ways of working to presenting courses online. They ask us to pray too for the recruitment process as they seek to appoint other key members of staff, including a director of operations and finance. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We've been thinking this morning about the fundamental importance of your word to us. So we pray for all those who work as Bible translators and for Christian publishers providing commentaries and other helpful resources. We may too easily take for granted the possession of a Bible, whether in paper format or as an app on our phone. So we pray for Christians across the world who don't have access to a Bible of their own, but also for those who risk persecution or prosecution because they do have one. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Father, we thank you that your word has been faithfully preached in this church over many years. And we thank you for Tim and for all others presently involved in this ministry and for their commitment to it. We pray too for all the small groups in our church, including our children's groups. We pray that they will give opportunities to study and learn from your word. As some of our groups have begun meeting in person again, we pray that relationships will be developed and strengthened and that the groups will continue to be a source of support and encouragement. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We have been reminded this week how much we depend on those who drive heavy goods vehicles and tankers, and so we thank you for them. Please help us not to take their work for granted. We pray for moderation in news reporting, not headlines which cause panic. And we pray that that where there is a shortage of goods, people will be kind and considerate, thinking of the needs of others as well as their own. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We remember those in particular need today. For those who have major decisions to make, for wisdom and clarity of thought. For those ill at home, in hospitals, hospices, nursing homes, and in psychiatric care. For those awaiting diagnosis or treatment, for patients, endurance. and for the bereaved. And we especially remember the family and friends of Mrs. Shirley Barnes, whose funeral was held last week. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. 
Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And we pray for ourselves. O gracious and holy Father, give us wisdom to perceive you, diligence to seek you, patience to wait for you, eyes to behold you, a heart to meditate upon you, a life to proclaim you. Amen. And finally, we say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you, Sheila. We are coming towards the end of our service now, but we do have some notices. Are you good at your woos this morning? I do miss the days when we had paper notices. I can make you wave them to um, make, prove that you got them. Um, we, do have, we do email out the notices. If you'd like to get a copy of the notices and you're not on the email list, do email me, uh, tim at allsaints-wellington.org, and we'll add you on. Um, and they do, of course, go out on the screen before the service as well. Um, but just to highlight a couple of them that I would like uh, to draw to your attention. Next Sunday afternoon is Explore at four o'clock. We are back in the parish centre. We're going to be doing it um, a little bit differently to how we were doing it in church, a little bit more like we used to do Explore, for those of you who used to come to Explore. Um, and we would really love to be able to provide a simple meal at the end of Explore. Um, uh, but we, at the moment, don't have a catering team. Uh, folk who were on it for um, very good reasons have had to step back, so that's fine. Um, but if you could come for an, an hour and a half, maybe, you have to come to the whole of it and prepare hot dogs and something, some simple meals. If you could have a word with me or Caroline or Jill Reeves. Oh, there's a sign, even a sign-up sheet at the back, says Judy. So um, that would be really great, um, just as we start getting that back going again. The other thing to remind you is I spoke at the beginning of the term about living in love and faith, uh, this Church of England thing which uh, helps us to have good conversations about relationships and sexuality and identity. And we're going to have five evenings looking at these things. Uh, they start in, not this Thursday, the following Thursday. Um, there's also the option of going to Rockwood Wind Wood and doing it on a Tuesday evening, if you can't do a Thursday evening. Um, but so that we can get enough course books and we know who's coming, it would be really helpful if you could say, send me an email to tell me you're coming. Some of you already have. Some of you have kind of mentioned it in passing. Um, but if you could actually email me, and if I've emailed you back to say, yes, you're on the list, then I definitely know you're coming. If, I haven't, if you don't have an email from me saying, I know you're coming, I don't know you're coming, so please email me. I can't remember everything that's said to me on the door, okay? Because I'm not that good. Um, but it would be lovely for as many of us to possible to come along and engage in that conversation and listen to each other's life experiences. That is a week on Thursday. I think that's everything I needed to do there, but I do also need to receive the collection. Yes, I can see you, Judy. That's fine. <laughs> Okay, uh, so we're going to bring forward the plate. Um, we're not allowed to pass the plate at the moment, but this is in recognition and gratitude to God for his generosity to us. Father God, we thank you that you give us so much. You pour out your riches on us in so many ways. And we pray that these gifts and the gifts that we give through our bank accounts will be used uh, to glorify your name and further your kingdom. Amen. Amen. Oh, for those of you who are in the building, you'll be able to see these. For those of you on the stream, hopefully you'll notice the effect of these. We did get, one of the things God gave us was a grant to do, change some of the lighting, to do, get more environmentally friendly lighting. So you will notice the new spotty lighties, which are much slimmer than the old ones, and um, which uh, provide much even a better light cover and cost a lot less to run because they're using far less electricity, even though they're brighter. Isn't that clever? Ooh! And they do all kinds of funny colour things as well, so 
when we, when we have productions and concerts and things, we can do lots of different colours and... Whoa. We could, we could even have a disco. We're not going to have a disco. Um, <laughs> indeed. So, yes, we're very grateful to the guys, uh, PF Productions, who fitted those for us and for those on the team working on that. Um, and uh, you might even see it as a picture in the Telford Journal this week if it all goes to plan. Anyway, uh, we're going to sing our final hymn in a minute. We have got refreshments down in the hall today, so if I could ask that those of you who have left small people down at the hall, if you could go and start collecting them during the hymn, that means we can get them signed out uh, for our safeguarding before the hordes arrive for coffee. So that would be really helpful um, if you could do that. Um, if you're comfortable to do so, could you please stand with me as we sing our final hymn, O oh, Jesus, I Have Promised. O oh, Jesus, I have promised to serve thee to the end. Be thou forever near me, my master and my friend. I shall not fear the battle if thou art by my side. Oh, wander from the pathway if thou wilt be my guide. Oh, let me feel thee near me. The world is ever near. I see the sights that dazzle, the tempting sounds I hear. My foes are ever near me, around me and within. But Jesus draw me nearer and shield my soul from sin. Oh, let me hear thee speaking in accents clear and still. Of passion, the murmurs of self-will. Reassure me to hasten all control. Oh, speak and make me listen, thou guardian of my soul. Oh, Jesus, thou hast promised to all that follow thee that where thou art in glory, there shall my servants be. And Jesus, I have promised to serve thee to the end. Oh, give, give me grace to follow my master and my friend. Oh, let me see thy footmarks and in them plant my own. My hope to follow duly is in the strength of me, call me, draw me, uphold me to the end, and then in heaven receive me, my Saviour and my friend. God, who from the death of sin raised you to new life in Christ, keep you from falling and set you in the presence of his glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Sorry, I know that many of you signed a card for Neil Robinson on your way in. Uh, Neil was taken into hospital last weekend and looks like he's going to be in another three weeks probably. He's got a very badly poorly heart valve 
Um, he's okay in himself, um, but if you haven't had a chance to sign get well cards for him, please do. There are two at the back, and do hold him and Judith in your prayers, please. Thank you.